Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopijana Vallabha Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vindaki Jai. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Goranga. Well, this morning when I read the uh, scores, I think I said it was the 23rd, but it's actually the 24th. Of course, I may be wrong about that. Okay. Come on. All right. Narayana Namaskritya. Narayana Namaskritya. Narayana Shavana Devim Saraswati Vyasam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Narayan Rishi, the Supermost Human Being, unto Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashtaprayesha Shabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya 
Bhagavad-yutta-mashloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki by regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service unto the pure devotee. Everything in auspicious in the heart is destroyed almost to nil and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Now before we begin, one little pronunciation note on the last line of the song we sing every morning. Yamunatira Vanachari. It's actually Yamuna. Long A at the beginning, short A at the end. Anyone know why, grammatically? Because it's of the Yamuna. It's not the Yamuna, of the Yamuna. Yamuna Tira, Yamuna Tira. So just remember that next time we sing it. You'd be the only ones who are singing it in Iskan that way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 24th day of June, 2024, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 7. The Science of God, Chapter 9, Pallad pacifies Lord Nishingadeva with prayers, text number 39. Okay. Naitan, Naitan. Manas, Manas, Tava, Tava. Katasu, Katasu. Vakunta, Nata, Nata. Sampriyate, Durita, Dushtam, Asadhu, Tivram, Kamaturam, Harsha Shoka, Vayayashanatam, Tasmin, Katam, Tava, Katim, Vimishyami, Dina, Naitan Manastava Katasu Vikunta Nata, Sampriyate Durita Drishta Masaru Tivram Kama Turang Harsha Shoka Bayaishanatam Tasmin Katanta Bhagatim Vimashami Dina Naitan Manasta Bakatasu Bikunta Nata Sampriyate Durita Dushta Masadu Tivram Kama Turang Harsha Shoka Bayaishanatam Tasmin Katam Tabakatim Vimashami Dina All right, before I do the last one. Third line, you see that harsha shoka there? Uh, it's got the same values in terms of the bead, but instead of it, harsha shoka. If you add an A in there, it would be harsha shoka. But it's not harsha shoka, it's harsha shoka. But you're, you're rushing that, you're trying to fit it into the other one. And you're, you're so it's kama toram harsha shoka bayaishin artem. You get it? Okay, let's try it. Naitan Manasta Bakatasu Vikunta Nata Sampriyate Durita Dushta Masadu Tivram Kama Turang Harsha Shoka Bayaishanatam Tasmin Katanta Bakatin Vimashami Dina Naitan Manasta Bakatasu Vikunta Nata Sampriyate Durita Dushta Masadu Tivram Kama Tadam Harsha Shoka Try it again 
Kamatodam Harsha Shok by Aishanartam Tasmin Katam Tabakatim Vimashami Dinaha Kovanan Nayatan Manasta Bakatas of Kuntanata Sampri yate to the Tadushta Masadu Tibram Kama to them her Shashoka by Aishanatam Katanta Bakatim Vimisham Hidinaha. Anyone else? Nayatan Manasta Bakatas of Kuntanata. Sampri yate durita dushta masadu tibram. Kama to them her shashok by Aishanatam. Tasmin katam the bagatim vimisham hidinaha. A brother in chair. Naitan manasta bakatas vipunta nata. Sampi yate durita dushta masadu tibram. Kama to them harsh shoka by Aishanatam. Tasmin katam ta bakatim vimisham hidinaha. You want to try? Naitan manasta bakathasu bekunta natha. Sampri yate durita dushta masadu tivram. Kama to them harsha shoka by Aishanatam. Tasmin katam ta bakatim vishashami dinaha. There's a verse ending with Baba Grahi Janardana. I'll explain it after class. It was written for you. Vijay, you up there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, you want to chant? Yes, I want. May I? You may. Thank you very much. I want to chant. Naitan manasta bakatas of the Kunta Nata. Some priate do it a dushta masadu tibram. Some priate do it a dushta masadu tibram. Tasmin katam ta bhagatim vimasham hidina. B minus, not bad. All right. No? Certainly not. Etat? This. Manaha? Mind. Tava? Your. Katasu? In transcendental topics. Vakunta nata? O Lord of Vaikunta, where there is no anxiety. Sampriyate is, pa is pacified or interested in. Durita, by sinful activities. Dushtam, polluted. Asadhu, dishonest. Tivram, very difficult to control. Kama Atoram, always full of different desires and lusty propensities. Harsha shoka, sometimes by jubilation and sometimes by distress. Bhaya, and sometimes by fear. Eshana, and by desiring. Artam, distressed. Tasmin, in that mental status. Katam, how. Tava, your. 
Katim, Transcendental Activities. Vimashami, I shall consider and try to understand. Dinaha, who am most fallen and poor. Translation, my dear Lord of the Vaikuntha planets, where there is no anxiety, my mind is extremely sinful and lusty, being sometimes so-called happy and sometimes so-called distressed. My mind is full of lamentation and fear, and it always seeks more and more money. Thus it has become most polluted and is never satisfied in topics concerning you. I am therefore most fallen and poor. In such a status of life, how shall I be able to discuss your activities? Purport. Here, Pallad Maharaj represents himself as a common man, although he actually has nothing to do with this material world. Pallad is always situated in the Vaikuntha planets of the spiritual world. But on behalf of the fallen souls, he asks how, when his mind is always disturbed by material things, he can discuss the transcendental position of the Lord. The mind becomes sinful because we are always engaged in sinful activities. Anything not connected with Krishna consciousness should be con understood to be sinful. Indeed, Krishna demands in the Bhagavad Gita 1866, we can all chant together, Sarva dharman padityajya mame kang shadanam vraja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshi yasyami mashrachaha Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Close quote. As soon as one surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, Krishna immediately relieves one of the reactions of sinful activities. Therefore, one who is not surrendered to the lotus feet of the Lord should be understood to be sinful, foolish, degraded among men, and bereft of all real knowledge because of atheistic propensities. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, 7.15. Namam duskrita no mudha papadyante naradama mahiya parita jnana asadam bhavamashita there, no, that was the uh, Sanskrit for the translation which he gave before the verse. Therefore, especially in this age of Kali, the mind must be cleansed, and this is possible only by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Cheto Dharpana Marjanam. In this age, the process of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the only method by which to cleanse the sinful mind. That's what Cheto Dharpana Marjanam means, cleaning the mirror of the mind. When the mind is completely cleansed of all sinful reactions, one can then understand his duty in the human form of life. The Krishna consciousness movement is meant to educate sinful men so that they may become pious simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Iva Kevalam, Kalau Nasteva, 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 Gatadanyata. To cleanse the heart so that one may become sober and wise in this age of Kali, there is no value to any method other than the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Balad Maharaj has confirmed this process in previous verses. Tvadviya Gayana Mahamata Bhagna Chitta. Actually, that verse comes subsequent to this, near the end of his prayers. Balad further confirms that if one's mind is always absorbed in thought of Krishna, that very qualification will purify one and keep one purified always. To understand the Lord and his activities, one must free his mind from all contamination of the material world. And this one can achieve by simply chanting the Lord's holy name. Thus one becomes free from all material bondage. Om jnana timarandrasya jnana shalakaya chukshurun midatamena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. Okay, just one note on that uh, last verse Prabhupada quoted, Tvadviya Gayana Mahamata Magna Chitta. Of course, in terms of chronology, this all took place million, thousands and millions of years ago, so in that case, uh, he's, he's already chanted this verse millions of years ago, so that's a previous verse, Hare Krishna. So here, Pallad Maharaj is, um, did I say Omagyana? I did, okay. 
sorry, my malignancy nail here. So, Prahlad Maharaj is doing what we often, often find in our acharyas. When, uh, what is that song, Prabhupada's favorite song? Hari Hari Vipale, Janma Gainaidu. I've wasted my life, right? Is that by Naratama or by Bhaktivinoda? Bhaktivinoda, Bhakti right? Yeah, so, I mean, Prabhupada's, you know, I'm sorry? It is Naratama. So what does that song say? Vipale, I mean, you can, everyone, v v pale is the fruit. Vipale means no fruit. I've was wasted my life fruitlessly by not serving you. This, it's all a lamentation. Now, this is common. You'll find that in, in our great acharyas. They often take the role of a uh, helpless soul, sinful soul, who's praying to the Lord, please, you're Dina Bandhu. I'm the most fallen. Please save me. You see? And uh, why are they doing that? Even Lord Chaitanya does. That second verse, it's a, uh, what is it? It's one of the vigyaptis. Um, lala, not Lala Shamahi, Dainya, Dain, Dainya, Vibodhan or something like that. Dainya Bodhika. Taking the role of someone who's, who's uh, helpless, in other words, just like all of us and, uh, and we were before we joined and now we're working it off. But uh, the point is, they're teaching us how to approach the Lord in that helpless condition. And we find the same thing in Queen Kunti's prayers, right? She, what, what's the, near the end of her, of her prayers is my most favorite prayer, practically, of all. Omaru's Lord, please ever fill my mind with thoughts of thee, not any other kind. As Gandhi's torrent flows into the sea, let all my love flow constantly to thee. So she's already that in that scene, but she's taking that role. She's taking that position to teach us. And Lord Chaitanya in the second verse of the uh, Shikshastika, Nam Nam Akari Bahudani Sarva Shakti. My dear Lord, you have unlimited names like Krishna Govinda, and in them you have invested all of your potencies. But alas, I'm so I have no attraction for the holy name. Lord Chaitanya is saying that. So he's teaching us this, this um, important attitude to take. Of, of helplessness, come before the Lord help, helplessly and to pray from the bottom of the heart, please, I'm, I'm, you're the, you know, you find this all the time, you're known as the most merciful of all, you know, Patita Pavana, raiser of the, uh, of the uh, purifier of the fallen. I am the most fallen, you know, so you'll really live up to that name if you save me, you know, like that. And they're feeling like that. They're actually feeling like that. This is the important thing. And, and so Pallad is so advanced, he's actually feeling in this way. Uh, my mind is extremely sinful and lusty. Uh, he, he gives, remember, another prayer that I was, after all, I was born amongst all the demons. Remember at the end of his prayers, I think we've heard this before, where Nishungang uh, is so pleased with him. You know, just when, he, when Pallad approaches and offers his base and stands up, immediately Nishungadeva is pacified. Then he's Komala Nishringa. We have paintings like that you've seen, and you know, everything is very sweet. Be just a moment before, you know, blood is everywhere. He just killed Aranyakashipu. His eyes are raving, raging. And, and, uh, he's, uh, and Lakshmi, what to speak about, even Lakshmi was afraid to approach him. Or his, or his, or his, his wife is, you know, what to speak of Brahman, Shiva, the others. But Pallad, he was completely fearless. He didn't have any fear. He certainly he didn't have any fear to Aranyakashipu, what to speak of Nishringa <laughs> So he comes and he offers his obeisances, you know, like that. And now he's offering these prayers and he's teaching us how to uh, approach the Lord. So, give me a second here. I did something I shouldn't have done. Okay. So let's go through this one here. It says, uh, My dear Lord of Vaikuntha, where there's no anxiety, my mind is extremely sinful and lusty, right? Being sometimes so called happy, sometimes so called distressed. My mind is full of lamentation and fear, and it always seeks more and more money. So he's, he's like ticking off the different symptoms of the modes of passion and ignorance, right? Uh, uh, the, how many times, you know, you, you find in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, where is there any happiness without peace? You remember that one? You know, when it, and, and, we, and one has to have a pacified mind, a, a calm mind, in order to practice Krishna consciousness. What is that? Bhogai Shraya Pasaktanam Taya Parita Chedesam. Vivasayatma Kabure Eke Samadho Nabhiyate. 
right? Very famous verse. So he's describing this vyavasayatmaka buddhi, this, this, uh, so this one-pointed fixed determination, which only comes when one is, uh, is conquered over the, the sinful desires and all of these things, you know, he's very fixed. So, but, but he says, but, bhogashraya prasaktanam, if one is attached to material enjoyment and, and, and uh, wealth and is disturbed by those things, prasaktanam, aparita chetasam, one cannot attain that fixity, that nishta, that determination to perform devotional service. So uh, he's warning us in the, in the Bhagavad Gita and other places too. So Prahlad is describing himself as, as completely unqualified. My mind is full of lamentation and fear, and it always seeks more and more money. Now this, this idea of, of fear as being a concomitant of material life is, is a theme throughout the Bhagavatam. That verse I always quote, Bayam dutiya banaveshi taksyadi shadapi tatsivipariyo smiti. Prabhu quoted all the time. It's, it characterizes everyone in the material world. Yes, there are times when you're not fearful, when you're enjoying yourself, but, but before long, you know, before you, you, you drive home from the, uh, from the bar, provided you're not you know, intoxicated, uh, there's so many things you gotta worry about. Oh my lot, I've been out too long, what is my wife and wife gonna, gonna think, you know? And, and so many anxieties, I did that, we'll be able to get up tomorrow for work. It's just, uh, this is what material life is. It's a little bit of pleasure, you convince yourself, you cover yourself up enough and you enjoy some sense pleasure, but then there's the reaction. Then there's the, 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 uh, the, uh, the worry, the anxiety, the fear, and uh, the, the other part of it is you've, you've planted more des desires and it's just a syndrome. Now you have all these, uh, the, this, this very strong desire that you have to try to fulfill again and it's, it's, it's uh, completely uh, captivating and, uh, and imprisoning the conditioned soul. My mind is full of lamentation and fear, always seeks more and more money. Thus it become most polluted and is never satisfied in topics concerning, uh, concerning you. So this is the key, is that the, the antidote to all this especially in this age, is a sound vibration, the pure sound vibration, beginning with the holy name, obviously. But also, all of these books that Srila Prabhupada has given, the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, the Nectar of Devotion, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the mind can become satisfied. Uh, by, if, if we're practicing properly, we should be fully satisfied in hearing the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and Krishna and all these. And also in, in hearing the philosophy. Right in the middle of the 10th, chapter, not the middle, near the end of the 10th chapter, there's this long uh, chapter, especially in, with all the commentary, of the prayers of personified Vedas. It's very interesting because at the beginning, you know, the uh, uh, Parikit Maharaj is asking Shukadev, please now describe, you know, the pastimes of the Lord. We've been through all these cantos, you know, and the fifth canto and all the eighth, seventh, eighth, ninth canto. And they all have their, their place, important, but now, you know, it, it's getting to be the sixth, seventh day now, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna get to the, <laughs> so he's really anxious to hear that. Nibhita Tarshai Dupaguyamana, that's right at the beginning, almost uh, introductory verse to the tenth canto. So, but within the tenth canto, you find so much philosophy, not just in chapter 87, but uh, the prayers of the Nagaputnis, the, the wives of Kaliya, you know, and the prayers of the, of the demigods for Krishna in the womb, right? All of these prayers and all of these things, you come, they, they appear periodically. You're relishing, you know, Krishna's pastime, Kaliya, you know, he's dancing in Kaliya, it's such a wonderful, dramatic thing, you know. And then there's uh, the Nagaputnis, the, the, the lesson in philosophy, comes in periodically like that. So, why is that? Because underly underlying our attraction for Krishna, our development of actual attraction for the holy name, which is after all what we're after, there has to be a philosophical foundation. Because at times, uh, there won't be a natural attraction. We'll have to rely on our intelligence to say, this is the right thing to do. Even though I don't want to do it, even though I have so many reasons why I don't need to do it, I, I know I, re I need to get up early, I need to chant my rounds, I need to do all this. This is, this is sadhana bhakti. Until you get to that point of complete nishta and 
taste, ruchi and asakti, it all becomes spontaneous, you know. But, the, but the, to get to that spontaneous point, we have to go through those difficulties when we have to control the mind and say, no, not that way, this way. You see? That's going to impede my devotional service this way. And this very, you know, kind of uh, bracing statement Prabhupada made in here, <coughs> anything not connected with Krishna consciousness should be understood to be sinful. That's pretty heavy. Anything. You know, we may think we may talk a little about Pajalpa here, do this, you know, and get absorbed. And that's, I, I know I'll, I'll, I'm going to, you know, I finished my rounds already, so, that, you know. <coughs> but no, that's sinful. That's sinful, you know, anything not connected. That's a heavy statement. So how to, how to uh, deal with that? Well, we have to, you know, re read these prayers of Prahlad and take it, take it seriously. I remember reading this, the prayers of Brahma in the third canto. This is when I first started um, proofreading. And uh, they were so inspiring. There's one where he says, Chut trit tridadabadima muharajimanam. Probably, probably no one's heard that one before the, since he last read the third canto. But he's saying there, uh, he's, he, he hasn't, he, this is a prayers for, for creative energy, you know, prayers for creative. So he hasn't actually created anything yet. But he's praying to Krishna to, to, you know, to give him the inspiration and the power to do it. So here he's visualizing what's going to happen. All oh, these poor people, you know, they're, they're thirst and, and, and hunger and uh, threefold miseries and all this he's making. And he says, and seeing that, my heart is melting with compassion. It hasn't happened yet, but he knows that's going to happen, you see? And then there's a verse there, which I memorized when I first read it many, many years ago. Does anyone know this verse? Probably not. It's not so famous. <laughs> but it's a really nice verse. In, his, in these verses, there's two, two of them that, that have this theme, where you, you're, you're seeing by hearing. You see? You're, and his one is you're smelling the fragrance of the lotus feet of Krishna by hearing. In other words, it, it's, it, it's a reality, it's spiritual reality, but you can enter into it through the sound vibration, and then it becomes the actual sensation, spiritual sensation. So in this one he says, ye to, ye but those who tradiya uh, number dukosha gandam jigranti karna vibharai can smell the fragrance of your lotus feet, feet through the ears by hearing. Jigranti karna vivarai, the whole city, karna vivarai, yaitu chadanam buddha kosha gandam jingan kamarai shuvanat nitam bhaktya guhita. They accept devotion to you. In other words, from this, they, they uh, become more and more devoted to you. Chadana, and you're never separated from the lotus of their hearts. You see? So, what this means in the advanced stage, you can experience all of the sensations just by hearing Krishna's pastimes. This is, this is the, the transcendental stage. And that's why the hearing process and the chanting is so prominent amongst our acharyas. What, what were Rupa and Sanatana and Jiva and all the others doing? All that? They're writing, 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 and sharing with each other. I remember when I first went to Radhadamana, those who have been to Vrindavan go to Radhadamana Temple. He, uh, what Prabhupada explained one time, I don't know if it's still current, uh, you know, uh, known so well, is that there in Radhadamadar Temple, the Goswamis would meet, and then they would share about what, you know, what they're writing and all the things. They would hear and chant there together. You know, such a, such a sanctified place, such a potent place. So that's really a model for what we're supposed to do. What, what does Prabhupada refer to? I, me I mentioned this uh, verse that he, a little part of a verse, that he uh, chants here. You remember that? Tvadvirya guy in the Muhammad among the Chitta. Does anyone re recognize that line? It's the second line in the verse beginning, Nai Vodvijay. Nai Vodvijay and the one following it are two very important verses for the Sankirtan movement. In that, in that verse, the first one, which is 43, he says, Nai Vodvijay padadarati avaitaranyas. The Vaitarani river is this river between the material and the spiritual world. And, and if you're on this side, then we're always in, in, in here, birth, death, old age, and disease. So what it means is that he's always with, with Nishringadev. He's always with Krishna. 
His mind is always there. That's what he's famous for. He's the exemplar for meditating, right? For absorbing the mind. So that's why he was so safe. He was completely uh, safe from all of the attacks of his father because he's completely fixed on Krishna. So what he's saying is that I don't have any disturbance. I'm not disturbed. Udvijay, that was the same word he used at the beginning describing the nature of the conditioned souls. Udvigna means disturbance, always disturbed, not peaceful. So he said, Naiva Udvijay, I'm not at all disturbed, I'm completely peaceful. Because you're on the other side of the, of, of the Vaitamani River, obviously, and I'm with you all the time. And what, and what is the, how can I enliven my, Pradvi Yagaya and Mahamata Maglachitsa. At any time, I can chant your powerful activities, Vyagayana, singing them, and Mahamata Maglachitsa, immerse my mind in an ocean of nectar. So, well, I, I don't have any problem. You know, and he proved it by, by his interaction with his father and everything. So, but then he says this, this very this surprising thing, Shoche, but I am lamenting. What are you lamenting about? Right? Sounds like Ramchanda Puri, you know. My dear Madhavendra, why are you lamenting? Hey, what is all that? You know, it's a verse of lamentation and separation. Anyway, so he was kicked out because he was ruining the mood. But so Prahlad is lamenting, why? For the conditioned souls. Because these fools, these not just fools, these extreme fools, vimudhan, uh, are bearing the great burden of trying to enjoy these little drops of maya sukaya, illusory temporary happiness. I am lamenting for them, vimukacheta, they turn away from you, you see, and instead of turning toward Krishna. Che indiyata maya sukaya bottom. Bottom means they're bearing great burden, trying to enjoy in this world. There's so many pre preconditions. You have to have health. You have to have. You can't. No, someone can't be threatening you. You have to have the money to buy what you're looking to get. Right? All these preconditions. You have to. Have. And so, it's it's such a burden, and it's so temporary, and it's so entangling and sinful and harmful. So he's lamenting for them. And the next verse, he says. Most of these Brian and Deva Munayo, these learned scholars, they're Swava Mukti Kama. What does that mean? Who can say? Swava Mukti Kama. Yeah, they're lusty. It's it's a form of material desire to be to be only after one's own liberation in the hell with everyone else. You see, that's that's what he's saying there. Maunam Chadandi Vijane. They wander where there's no people. Don't distract me. I'm I'm gonna become liberated. The hell with you, Gandhi. Vijane naparata nishta, not determined at all to help others achieve the goal. Napara arta, para is other people. Arta is the goal of liberation and bhakti, back to God. Nishta, not caring about it at all. But he said, I'm not like that. You see, this is why I'm lamenting. Naitan vihaya kripanan. I can't give up these kripanas, you know, and just abandon them. Naitan vihaya kripanan vimamuksha eko, and just desiring my own liberation. Because I see that these wandering souls have no shelter other than you. And of course, the implication is, and I have to give them you, I have to preach, I have to stay here. And Prabhupada described this, these two verses as essential for the mood of Sankirtan. This was Lord Chaitanya's mission. He, you know, he came down for two reasons, the internal, external reason. That's interesting from the, from, uh, understood from the beginning. His uh, primary reason, internal reason, was to relish his, his bhakti for himself from Radharani's point of view. There's a verse like that. He wanted to, well, what's the glory of her love? What is, what is uh, she feeling when she, when she loved me? How does she appreciate my qualities through the perfect lens of her love? That idea, you know? Three, three, threefold reason. But that's the external reason. That's the internal reason. The external reason that Narpada Chadim Jadat, he came in order to deliver the souls, to, to spread Krishna consciousness. So we should also have those two reasons. We should be trying to, to advance personally in devotional service, yes. But at the same time, we should be uh, eager to try to give this treasure to others. And they're interconnected. There's no one more dear to Krishna than one who spreads his message. So the whole point of bhakti is to become dear to Krishna, so he'll reveal himself more and more and welcome you back into the, the, the community of uh, his devotees. So 
uh, here Prabhupada is stressing the idea that the heart or the mind is, uh, has to be cleansed. It has to be cleansed of, of, of sinful desires and it has to be cleansed of sinful reactions. Or even if you're not performing any sin now, if you've performed many sins, then you can be very, very miserable. There's a whole, you know, there's PTSD, which is, which is very prominent amongst soldiers who've gone to war for American wars in Vietnam and Iraq or right, Iran. Right. Uh, the, the, the more of them died from suicide than from being killed by the enemy. Do you know that? Over the years. And one of the reasons dies is moral injury, which means that you were in a position where you were forced to perform an, act, an activity that you, you were, is abominable, often c killing children, you know? We, we, we shot the things and we went and we saw with, you know, all these women and children are killed, you know? And, and it's, you gotta live with that, you know? So that's a tremendous burden. And, and someone who feels that tremendous guilt and sorrow, uh, you can't just, you know, forget it. That's the whole point of PTSD. And, uh, you're living with that and it can just, just be a tremendous uh, horrible thing. And, and if you can't live with it, you, you may commit suicide. Of course, doesn't, that doesn't help, you know, but that ultimately that happens. So that, that's, uh, one has to be cleared of that also, the results of previous activities. And pro Krishna promises that. That's what Sarvadharman is all about. And that comes in at, at the end of the seventh chapter. You remember that? Yesham Trandakatam Papam Jananam Punyakarmanam Tait Bhandano Hinemakta Bhajanti Imam Jidabata. How can we worship Krishna with a, uh, a strong vow, Jidabata? So he describes it there. Uh, first, the previous verse, he says, those who are um, a bewildered, in this, in the, bewildered in this material world by the delusion of duality. That this is very good and pleasing, and this is horrible. This is good and pleasing and horrible. When actually it's all material. If you if you if you get attracted by material uh, pleasant things, then that's that'll bind you just as as much as, as being uh, averse to the unpleasant things. Both have to be fixed. So he so he says there. How do we come to this material world? That's described. Prabhupada said, "Itcha dvesha samutena dvandvamohena bharata." Sarvabhutani sammoham sarge yanti parantapa. Sarvabhutani, all living entities came in this way by uh, itcha. The itcha is desiring to de enjoy the things that Krishna is enjoying in competition. And dvesha means being uh, abhorrent, you know, it really means abhorrent to serving him anymore. Itcha and dvesha. Rising from that comes the delusion of duality. Oh, here in the material world, this is very nice. I have to avoid this. This is the abhinavesha taksya. This is where fear comes in. You immediately become fearful because you're detached from Krishna. You have to forget Krishna if you're going to compete with him. So you forget all about the material world, the spiritual world. And then you kind of enter this dream world of, of, the, of the dualities of the, of the material world. Prabhupada describes it like that in that letter. You're dreaming that you're, you're, you're separate from Krishna. Actually, you're not. You're completely dependent at every moment. You know? But in order to try to enjoy, you have to forget. So that's Maya's function. Okay, you want to forget? You know? So you get a little bit of uh, temporary happiness and a whole lot of misery. This is the, this is the deal. You know? <laughs> yes, you can compete, but it's, then you lose the human form and the whole thing. So, so that, that all arises from this... Um, uh, desiring to compete with Krishna, we are we are we have a minute bit of independence, and that we and that's why we, we're called marginal. We have a tendency to sometime go the other way and get a condition in this world. We're the minority of souls; the majority are there in the spiritual world. They never come here, but we've come here. But to go back, we we need to cleanse away this the, the these material desires and the res residue of previous sinful activities sinful reactions. And that's the po most powerful way to do that is? Harinam Sankirtan, right. And that Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna came as Lord Chaitanya in order to give that widely to everybody. That was his mission, external mission and the internal mission, which is demonstrated most in his last years in uh, Jagannath Puri, you know, in times of, of relishing uh, love for himself from Radharani's point of view. And, and you know, there's so much of that. So it all comes down to the sa to the sound. Now I just want to share one more verse with you. It's in a later chapter. Brahma is again offering prayers, and um, 
uh, and he's talk I think he's describing the spiritual world. One is prayers for creative uh, energy, and the other is his description of Vaikuntha. So then there, there's a question, well, who goes and who doesn't get to go? You know? And it's all based, this verse is all based on the sounds that you hear. It says, uh, yanna, yanna they don't go, who f then he described, Yanna Vajant Agabado, Rachana Nubara, Chin Bandiye, Anibishaya Kukutama Tignihi, Yastu Shutta, Hatabagar, Nubadata Saras, Tang Tang Chapanda Shadanesha to Maksu Hanta. Hanta, the last word in the verse is alas, Hanta. So what is he saying there? They don't go who do the following. Nayab Agabado, Agabado is he who, who uh, Agabado who destroys sin. That's Krishna. Rachanan a creation of words. In other words, something heard or something written, anything creation. Rachanan Avarat, Trinvandi, they hear it. Trinvandi ye anyabishaya, rather than the dealing with the, the Krishna, everything else. Kukata, it's not Krishna, because that's Kukata. The, the, the prefix ku means bad. Right? There's dharma and there's ku dharma. There's actual dharma and then there's so-called dharma, ku dharma. And there's kukata. Kukata is everything that's separate from glorifying Krishna, is devotional service, everything that Prabhupada gave us. And what's the result? Matignihi, destruction of one's intelligence. Destruction of one's intelligence. Yes, tu shuta. That those topics, tas tu tata steals away all of one's good fortune. Nibra and also destroys one's interest in the essence of life. Tang Tang, all of them, those topics, Tang Tang Chapancha Shadaneshu, they cast you down where there's no shelter in the lower species of life. You know, Hanta, alas, he's like that. But the other verse can come after this. But this word too is often very, very important. Two, on the other hand, Yetu to Dhyachadanamba to Kosha Gundam, those who cultivate Krishna consciousness to the point where they can smell the fragrance of the Lord's lotus feet by hearing, you see, <laughs> then uh it Shadanamba to Kosha Jigrandiga Bibarai Shudivada uh they accept devotional service. They become eager to follow everything to get more and more into, uh, advanced in devotion. And, and Krishna is never separated from the lotus of their hearts. So that's the choice we have. We have unlimited topics now of, of, that we can hear, beginning with Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. If, if that's, you know, if we're so attracted, that we can just do that. You can just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare. And of course, we have duties to try to spread the word so that you can take it out. There's a subodhi named uh, uh, Krishna Kripa, he used to live here. He helped, uh, he was a, a computer genius, and he helped uh, Sadaputta Prabhu and Judah Karmabhu. They all lived here back in the, in the mid 80s and late 80s when I arrived, they were all here. Madhavendra Puri also was here. You remember Madhavendra Puri? <laughs> and all together, they wrote that first ma major book, which is uh, Forbidden Archaeology. I think most of you were here and heard about that book. So Krishna Kripa, he helped with the computer stuff and everything. And, but eventually, the BI kind of uh, separated into different parts and uh, wasn't. And so he w decided that he was going to become a traveling monk, but not take sannyas. He didn't take sannyas, but his, his, his whole profile is he goes out everywhere and he tries to chant. He sits, uh, he sets up a book table in Malachua or anywhere he is, and he'll, he'll sell the books and have a kirtan going. And then also he will just do kirtan, you know, kirtan parties. And, is, you know, and he has a, 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 a site, and he, you know, can, I'm on his list, and he sends me a report. I, this is what I did last month, you know. New York, he'll join that party, you know, six hours a day on the street of New York. So uh, he, he uh, you know, he, he, I remember I taught him one verse way back in Philadelphia in the early 80s when he was there, just st starting out. And uh, whenever he, s he sees me or I s we see each other, we share that verse. And this is just, th we have such a wealth, you know, the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, and so many things, and there's the writings of the Goswamis. So this one is from the, from the, uh, the Govinda Lilamrita. And it just describes, I think I've changed this, it's, very, it's such a delightful verse. 
Venu vrindam anamandam ayantam, venu gitam amatam visujantam, venu ruchita talalaka bantam, kenu viksasam ayonam udantam. This is why Krishna's Kaviraj got the epaulet Kaviraj, the king of poets. You have to be deaf, whether you know Sanskrit or not, you can hear the, the euphony in that verse. Beginning at the end of each line rhymes, you, I mean, I've never seen that before in any English. So what does it mean? Denu, it's a very simple verse. Denu is the cows, Krishna's cows. Denu vrindam, the herds of cows. Anumandam ayantam, he's walking very leisurely behind his herd of cows as he's coming in. And what do you think he's doing when he's walking there? And here's a hint. <laughs> Venu, so what rhymes with Denu? Venu is a, is a flute, the flute. Venu gitam amitam visvajantam. He's uh, creating, playing uh, beautiful nectarian tunes on his, on his flute. Venu gitam amritam visvajantam. And what else is going on? Thousands of cows are kicking up all this rudge, rudge. You know what rudge, rudge, rudge is? Everyone know what it is? Raja means dust. Raja is Raja, so it becomes Raj Raj. That's all being kicked up and powdering his beautiful curly hair as he sways back and forth. So Renu, so y the Renu is dust. So you got Denu, Venu, Renu. Renu Rushitam Chala Lakabantam. So all his hair is moving, you know, as he walks side by side and nice curly. It's all getting dusted and becoming more beautiful. So it says, K Nu, who indeed, Viksha, seeing this sight, would not enter into the highest state of bliss. You see? So, that would be nice to see it, right? But the whole idea is by hearing about this, you can see it. I mean, I remember, you know, millions of years before I, I even knew about Krishna, when I was like 13, 14, we had to read, read books, you know, I, maybe it was 15, I'm in high school. And we read this one book by Charles Dickens called Little Nell or something like that. And it was, you know, these writers are so skilled. And you're actually, I remember at the end, she's a little orphan and she's in trouble or something, and I was crying when I read that book. Big deal. It's a not material book. But that's a material thing. But this is, this, you know, beautiful description in uh, our, our, oh, so many books of Krishna's Leela. That's the whole idea, that you can actually see it. If you learn this verse and chant it enough, you, you'll see it. So you'll begin to taste this highest bliss. So that's the idea. It, starts, it all starts with the holy name, which we know from so many times. It's non different from Krishna. There's Krishna there. It's inconceivable. But the fact is, if we chant, we've all experienced, yes, there's some real pleasure there. And most, most obvious, I'm not attracted to all this other garbage that I used to be interested in. Right? No more of that. How could I have ever done that? You know, I mean, that's what you think before long. And, and so that, that's the whole idea, is that the vairagya, uh, it becomes automatically if you're re really serious in following the program. Whereas for the impersonalists, it's impossible. You know, they don't have the holy name. They don't have the deities. Be didn't she do a beautiful job? And she did a really nice job, isn't it? I think this. And so they're already beautiful. Now they're super beautiful. So your mind is attracted by the prasadam, by the, by the incense, but especially by the, by the beautiful sounds and by Krishna himself. And he's attracting you away from the, the uh, matter. And, and that's it. So that's what uh, Pallad is, is uh, teaching us here. We should see that this is where we were at, you know, before we joined. And we can be there again if we make our nonsense. Uh, oh Lord, with, uh, by Kuntu, where there's no anxiety. My mind is extremely sinful and musty, being sometimes so-called happy, sometimes so-called distressed. Full of lamentation and fear, seeks more and more money become most polluted, never satisfied in you. I'm therefore most fallen and poor in such a state of life. How shall I be able to discuss your activities? So it's kind of a uh, lamentation. But we know, as, as Prabhupada points out in the purport, that he's actually, you know, uh, if there's nothing else to do, he'll just, you know, meet with the devotees or even alone, chant Krishna's beautiful activities and immerse his mind in, a, in an ocean of nectar. So this is, this is reality, and no one, you, nishta means, you know, there, there's a certain different states of uh, these, these nine, nine steps from faith to love. And that nishta is the same thing that every, every morning when I, whenever I give class, a lot of devotees chant, nashta prayesha badreshu. 
Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavad Gita Mashloka, Bhakti Bhavati, Naishtiki, the same word. One is an average adjective, one is the noun, Naishtiki, the state of being completely fixed in determination. By becoming more and more cleansed, you're cleansed of all of these memories and all of this, bad, you know, the, uh, the sinful reactions and the sins are ended. So you're, so you're naturally, by your purity, becoming more and more attracted to Krishna. And that's, that's uh, what Lord Chaitanya says is real faith. Adhav, not the Adhav but the Nishta. And that is Shadha Shabde Vishwas Kohe Sudridha Nishtroy Krishna Bhakti Korle Sarva Karma Kutahoi. Does anyone know what this means? Mm. Okay, just listen. Because Shraddha is, is the foundation of everything. So this is firm faith. And here's the definition given by Lord Chaitanya to Sanatana Goswami in his teachings. This, this idiom in Bengali, Shabde, means here's the definition. You know. Shraddha Shabde. Vishwas Kohe is a strong, uh, unshakable deter, you know, uh, conviction that what? Krishna bhakti korle sarva karma kutahoi. By just practicing Krishna bhakti, the past of Krishna consciousness, all my aspirations will be fulfilled. My life will become, become perfect. You see, no doubts, you know. Well, maybe I have to mix this in, have to do this, you know, like that. No, 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 no. Every waking moment, you know, something for Krishna and advancing in, in, in the chanting and the serving and preaching and everything. That's a sign of, of real advancement. And along with that comes more and more ruchi, more and more taste for the holy name and for everything related to Krishna. Which, and that ruchi is the beginning stage of attraction, asakti. You're actually becoming attracted to Krishna. And that matures into bhava, ecstatic experience, and prema, love. So, that, that, uh, so it's all very scientific. It begins with faith, faith the preliminary faith. Preliminary faith, adha, shraddha. Not the mature faith, but preliminary, which means, Prabhupada says, respect, interest, the desire to learn more, you know? It's like we have Dr. Baxter here, right? He's come, come several times this week. So it means that he's something interesting. He's interested in coming here to learn something and to experience the situation. So that's wonderful. That should be cultivated and, you know, uh, become more and more strong. How do you go? Yeah, I guess you had to go. I could tell by your dress. <laughs> How do you, Krishna? So we should, we should you know, know where we stand on that, that ladder from faith to love. And um, most of you are, you know, in an art and nevriti. We're trying to get rid of the anartas by practicing nicely. And, and the, the proof, we don't have to ask anyone, the proof will be when we have more and more conviction in the process and, and less and less you know, interest in uh, giving up, the, not giving up the process, but slackening off or something else besides Krishna. And, and what's, the, what's the, uh, the value? The value is in, in, you know, inconceivable. It means to really become c c fixed in devotion. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on out there. You know, we, our fixity is in here. You know, the bombs could be coming over. Okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Let's have a big kirtan, Prabhu's. Oh yeah, really, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. It may happen. This crazy world, you know. Or it can come to 120 degrees here, and uh, suddenly is a, it's a heat crisis. You may have to figure out how to stay cool, you know. And it's this, this, this a very dangerous time in, in, in history. But uh, Krishna consciousness can, is the only way to deal with it. Otherwise, we'll be swept away with anxiety and fear and uh, doubts and everything else. So that's what I'm learning from this, this verse. It's Pallad is teaching us that we should feel desperate for Krishna's mercy. Uh, how shall I be able to discuss your activities? So that's, that's the final question. So you know, we should spend our, our, our time reading, hearing, chanting, preaching and glorifying the Lord. That's, that's the perfect solution. All right, I went way over time. I'm so sorry. Hare Krishna. Any discussion? Oh, maybe we don't have time. Vijay? Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, so you can find reciting again the, the sentence immediately after the Hare Nama uh, shloka. Harinama Sloka, was that in here? Oh, there it is. To cleanse the heart so that one may become sober and wise in this age of Kali, there is no value to any method other than the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Yes, that is the sentence. Perfect.
Pretty. Anyone, if you anyone wants to leave or they have to leave, feel free. Go ahead, BJ. I'm with you. Yes. Uh, imagine that you are in the presence of two persons. One is already purified, and the other is still contaminated. So based on this, my question is, how do you, by what symptoms do you explain that one is uh, already purified and the other is still contaminated? That is my question. So why is one purified and the other uh, still contaminated? Despite the fact that both have been chanting Hare Krishna, is that what you're saying? No, no, no. You, uh, uh, the fact that you don't know, but you are, you are in the presence of two persons. One is already purified, and the other is is still contaminated. Uh, and and by, by associating with them, you start to understand the difference. So uh, how do you explain the difference? What, by what symptoms do you, you begin to understand that one is uh, already purified and the other is still contaminated? So how can you, uh, you say, how can you understand, understand who is who? Yeah, exactly. Okay. By uh, the, the, their activities and what comes out of their mouth. What they say. <laughs> How well are you going to know? You know, you see someone's behavior, and uh, you know you can tell. Well, wait a minute. This person is is is. First of all, you know, we ha I haven't experienced because I've been doing this class so long. You know, an evening. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, so so you know, so many people have come, male or female. You know, and they may come once or twice, and then you never see them again. They, they weren't actually able to hear, you know, or, or something they heard, you know, con uh, conflicted with what they, their preconceptions or whatever. The, the, sh the shraddha was too weak. It was just a preliminary little curiosity, but they, they, they didn't uh, have a, uh, you know, uh, enough receptivity to really uh, let it uh, sink in and so that they, they should pursue it. So, th so this happens all the time. And you can tell by, you know, what, what people are interested to, to talk about. Generally, they won't stick around because all, they, all we're doing is chanting Hare Krishna and talking about Krishna. Don't you, have, no, don't you have anything else, you know, or they have their own philosophical idea that they bring along, you know, something. So that, that, uh, that's an obvious case of someone who's not cleansed, who, whose heart is full with all kinds of different things. But then you find others who are serious. They may not be living in the temple, but they're, they're regulars, and they're chanting, and they're, they're progressing in, in uh, their, what, you know, what, they're, what they reveal by, by their, their, their demeanor and the activities they do, and especially by what they say and what they're interested to hear. So that's how you can tell. By, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it always manifests on the outside. Of course, you can't tell right away. You have to see, you know, how they how they act over a period of time. But it all all shows in the the general interest in Krishna consciousness and the the, the pleasure that they're getting, obviously, from kirtan and even this prasadam. And they usually come with a, a book that they're reading, you know, a Hare Krishna book. So that's a good sign of of uh, pur purification, not complete purification, but the progression that the wor the process is working. It's, it's not easy. I mean, otherwise, we would have taken over the world already. You know, it's been over 50 years, but there's a whole bunch of people who uh, know about the Hare Krishnas, but they think we're nuts. And they, they, they wouldn't go near us with a 10-foot pole, you know, that type of thing. They're unfortunate. They're unfortunate. But there are a lot of people out there who are receptive, and uh, at least they're receptive enough to take the first step, get a book, and then hopefully read it, and then uh, say, oh, this is intriguing, and like, got like that. So it's, it's always a process. All of us are, you know, in, in, in the, in the uh, shower, getting purified. And, the, and how fast we do is up to us. How much we're really trying to avoid those offenses, how, how strict we are in chanting every day and trying to hear. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, the mind is very tricky. So that's the, that's the answer. Uh, you know, their behavior and what they say is, is evident. Uh, 
the, your, the, how, how many years have this been? Has it been two years, three years that you've been uh, attending these classes? That we first heard yeah, you? More yes. Well, that's a good sign. Let me put it this way. Not that the, that you know my verse, my classes are so great or anything, but but but, but this is uh, a nice temple. We have many nice devotees who are g giving the nice classes, the kirtans. It's so that the, that you're you know interested, and I'm sure there are other things that you you attend. So your determination to do that in, indicates that you're serious. You have a good attraction to Krishna, and uh, we like your association. Thank you very much. Glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari. Sir, Hari Shabu had a question in the YouTube chat from Bhakta Priest. Yeah, but it's too late. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hari Bo. Tapas, you still there? Tapas. Yes, if you can communicate him, tell him to write me. I've been corresponding with him. I just wrote him s uh, something. He can r he can write me. He he'll probably do that anyway. But okay, okay. it's Chris, 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 Chris.